Ah, good afternoon. Is it's been a while since I've had a chance to speak with you. How have you been settling in with the other trainees? Really, because from what I hear, they like you so much that you've already made a few friends. Maybe you don't really understand what that means. We're here to train, to hone the mind and the body, to put out unnecessary distractions and focus on the matter at hand. And during this period of training, several of your colleagues are focusing instead on their friendship with you. Oh, no, no, not at all. You're not in any trouble. And quite the opposite, actually. The sages are very curious to figure out not only how you got here, but also why you seem to have this unique ability. Well, they're not falling behind in their training. They're actually excelling. Right, well, they're spending less time training, but excelling above and beyond some of our more advanced students. And the common factor between all of them is you. And all of the students you don't really talk to, no similar results. So, well, it's their belief that you were not brought here by some accident. You didn't just slip through a portal accidentally. That's the leading theory. Well, I don't think this is the right time or place to really get into it. But I did want to stop by and let you know that you are being talked about in the circles beyond what you're allowed access to. And it is favorable. Well, sure, there's a lot of confusion still. Well, sure, there's still a lot we don't know. We're not sure exactly where you came from. We're not sure how to reopen the portal to send you back. There are some who think maybe you aren't meant to go back. Maybe you're meant for something here. You know, I want to just say it's superstition and dismiss it outright. But I really can't. Well, think about it this way. We have been without quality trainees for a very long time. And suddenly and accidentally, someone just appears whose very presence improves the quality of training that the others are receiving. And it's not that you are not also training yourself. You are, and you're doing very well from what I've heard. But you're also causing those around you to excel. That, that is something worth investigating. Have you always had this power in your other life? Have you always had this power in your other life, the other side of the portal? I don't know anything about that. But it does sound like the people around you always had good luck. Always seemed to just do well. Is this not something you've noticed? Really? So... Here, walk with me. Um, these are things best talked about in private, away from curious ears. I know you've been below during your training. They send everyone down to fetch supplies and things. We will head down there. I have my own office. And we can discuss things more in private there. Well, there's a lot to discuss, actually. And I'm very glad you're willing to talk through these things with me. And we do. We want to do everything we can to send you home. That is 
my personal promise to you that I am doing everything in my power. But you need to understand, there are people far beyond me who make the decisions about what happens here. I want to send you home because I know how much it would hurt being pulled away from my home and being unsure how or even if I would ever get back. I am very serious about this. I am. I don't want you to feel like your priorities are being forgotten. I would hate for that. It's, it's never a good thing to feel like you are unimportant. And unfortunately, the sages, they have a certain way with people and precisely making you feel like you're just an experiment and not a living, breathing creature and not a wonderful soul deserving of consideration. You're not just some experiment, but to some of them that is how they view things. And their words carry more weight than mine. Well, namely this. If you had any hand in creating that portal, if you had any way to create your own, even if you just vaguely remember the smallest detail, anything that could help, maybe... Maybe I can help you find a way to get back. Because they are not interested. The majority of them would rather figure out why you're here than figure out how to send you back. Honestly, behind closed doors, it sounds like they don't want you to leave. And if you choose to stay, that is perfectly fine by me. But I, it does not sit well with me that they are conspiring to force you to stay. And I am not. I know very little about magic, but I do know how to read very well, and I have access to the entire library. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully I'm able to gather all the information I need and figure out something so that if they do in fact plan to keep you here, I can help you get away. Lots of speeches about the greater good, about improving the quality of our training forever. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? There are 15 of them. There is one of me. I don't know this Bruce Lee. He sounds like an amazing fighter if he could handle those odds. I am not, at least not against these people. Fifteen random strangers off the road. Someone who hasn't been training their entire life? Sure, I can probably handle that. But fifteen of our most dedicated and trained. Do you even know what goes into becoming a sage? It is a bit of a secret. Not just everyone can join up and start training. Not even for the program that you have found yourself in. But for the sages, it's even more difficult. You have to prove you have an ability to use magic. After you have gone through intense training far beyond the program you're in. Because it is believed that such knowledge cannot be trusted to those without discipline. And what do we teach here if not discipline? You stand for hours in the rain. Why? Standing in the rain does not equate to maneuvers used during active combat. No, it's about learning to avoid the outside distractions and do what needs to be done. Even if what needs to be done is uncomfortable. Even if what needs to be done to someone else 
looks like harm. Well, that's what I'm saying. I really don't know. I may have more access to these sages than the average trainee here. And that's because I've earned that privilege. I have been here for years, but they have all been here longer. And if they are making plans beyond me, beyond what I can hear, beyond what I can prepare for, I don't know what they'd do. Honestly, before today, I wouldn't have thought they would conspire to keep someone here against their will. But, well, we are where we are. I cannot pull you away from your training with the rest. That would be too suspicious. I would recommend that. Actually, make as many friends as you can. See how many people will actually improve beyond what would be expected of them. But you need to understand the risk. Because if you do have that same effect on everyone, well, it rules out anything else being the cause, that's what. This ability, if it exists, could be potent in reversing the damage that has occurred to this land over the last several hundred years. And many of those sages would benefit greatly from changing the course of history. And I do not want you to become an unwilling pawn in their plan. Because it isn't right. It is not right to force someone to stay against their will. It is not right to withhold information that could allow someone to return home because you would prefer they don't. The things that I have heard, the things I have seen recently, make me question whether I should even stay here after all. But that's something I can confront and handle after you are back safe where you belong, with your friends and your family. None? Surely there's someone you know, someone who would care very much if you were hurt, or if something worse happened to you. Then, I wonder, is it possible that your desire to be in a different light manifested in opening a portal that already existed just long enough for you to fall through. I suppose it's not unheard of. Ultimately, magic is just bending reality to suit your desires. Oh, no, I'm not a sage. You care what I think. I may be the one who found you, but that was pure coincidence. Anyone else could have Noticed you were not even wearing the right uniform. I don't honestly even know how they didn't. And they were. They were very helpful. In fact, that is one of the reasons that some of them think you should stay here. You didn't hear this from me. But there are more than just books and monks in this monastery. There are secret things, hidden things. I've already confessed to you there is no high saying. There is a lot at work here. More than you would ever know. More than could ever be seen in your wildest dreams. Because ultimately it comes from a desire to help the people of this land. And if the end goal is a good one, then Maybe we can... I know, even as I'm saying these words, I don't really believe them. Your appearance has really thrown a wrench in a lot of things. No, no, no. You don't apologize. You didn't do anything. Right, well, it's not like you woke up one day and just decided to suddenly master magic to a degree that none in your world even realizes possible. All to come here and mess with everything here? That makes no sense. 
I appreciate your willingness to apologize. That just shows how good of a soul you really are. No, you did nothing wrong. You don't need to apologize. I... I have a confession. And... Or if you will repeat it to anyone else, I will deny it. But I'm interested in seeing your world. Well, think of it this way. You accidentally stumbled into my world. And everything started revolving around you. You are either someone of incredible importance. Or you come from a very influential world. I don't know the specifics. I know there are different versions of different worlds. And that some are anchors that hold the rest of the realities in place. So if your presence here has such a significant effect on things to cause so many changes so quickly, maybe it's because you're from one of these anchor worlds. And I have always wanted to visit one, because we are not one. Well, this is why this land... I mean, you've, you've heard about it from the others. We've been trapped in war for hundreds of years. And I don't mean a war where two sides fight. And then there's a ceasefire. And things continue with relative peace until it descends into war. There are battles every single day. People are losing their lives all day, all night, every day and every night. Your presence here offers a glimpse at possibly changing that. And I can't be mad at the elders for seeing that opportunity. But it still isn't right. This is not your home. No, not that you don't belong here. If you do desire to stay, you're more than welcome. But you should at least have the option. That option should not be taken from you. Here is my suggestion. You have been doing well in your training. Continue to do well. And don't tell anyone about what we've spoken about in here. Uh, they will ask. Tell them that I scolded you and had you running drills for throwing off all of our plans. One additional body, one more mouth to feed, one more body to train. It adds up to more than you think. They will believe that. Do not speak a word about anything I told you the sages have said. I have privacy in here, but outside of these walls, assume they are always watching and always listening. Do not talk about this with anyone. Good. Okay. I have a few more things I need to finish in here. And I believe it would be best if we are not seen leaving together. It would lead some more credibility to our story. So you go ahead, and I will be along when I've finished a couple of other tasks. Please remember, keep it secret. We can't have anybody finding out. Good night to you as well, and be sure to get some rest. You can work extra hard, and you could use all of the sleep you can get. Hello, everyone. Star here, and thank you for listening to this video, audio, vadio kind of thing. This is the second part in our totally Kung Fu Panda series, but, um with a twist. I'm not sure if I want these sages to be evil or not. But it's a thought. It's a thought bouncing around in my head. I liked the show the Marvel adaptation of Iron Fist. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, his main love interest was essentially trained by the bad guy. 
and there was this whole story arc of her having to come to terms with the fact that everything she'd been taught and everything she believed in was based on straight up bullshit because they were the bad guys so that idea is you know bouncing in my head but I also really like the angle of hey they're not necessarily bad but they see an opportunity they see temptation and they reach for it because that's what people do not all of us but a lot of us most of us probably all of us a lot more often than we'd want to admit and I'm not talking about temptation in the sense of like a sin right not in like a Catholic sense but it's not right to restrict someone's choices for what they want to do with their own life. Regardless of your reason for it, it's still not right, you know? And um, this is absolutely not an allegory for people in the real world who get into politics. But people like to be in control of the way the world's going. It gives them a sense of, I don't know, power and you know, you say that and it sounds like a bad thing, but at the end of the day, don't we all want some power to make the world a better place? If there was some way I could just snap my fingers and all of a sudden world hunger is gone, I'd do it in a fucking heartbeat. I think a lot of people get into politics, get into positions of power because they feel like if they can control something, they can try to make the world better. You know, there's a, a quote that I read somewhere, or heard somewhere, I don't even remember, but, but basically, no one sees themselves as the villain of the story. Everyone thinks what they're doing is the right thing to do, to make a better world, except in rare cases, but generally people want to make the world a better place. And it's a very believable and close to home storyline with enough mystical magicalness sprinkled in where it's not just me reading the newspaper or something. Hopefully, you like this story. And if you have some opinions on whether the sages should be outright evil or just, just misguided and losing their sense of right and wrong, or hell, maybe it's just um, I feel like I could sit here and throw ideas all day and we're already closing in on 35 minutes of recording. So instead, I will say thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Even though they're spending less time... Even...